everyone, and welcome to Total Packers with Matt LaFleur, Larry McCarron, along with the head coach of the Green Bay Packers, and Matt, Green Bay 27, Pittsburgh 17, a total team victory in every sense of the word. Yeah, absolutely. I thought our guys played hard. We played physical. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of things to clean up on in, in all three phases. Coming into the game, Randall Cobb has four catches for 58 yards and no touchdowns in the previous three. Against the Steelers, five catches, 69 yards, two TDs. What's going on there? Yeah, he, he provided a big spark for us, and we, we certainly needed that with out having MBS. Pittsburgh was well aware of number 17 and where he was going to be, so it was great to get Randall involved. A.J. Dillon, 81 yards rushing, almost five and a half yards a carry. Was he the right kind of back for the right kind of opponent in the right kind of weather? Yeah, I think so. You know, he ran tough. He ran physical. I think the guys up front did a great job blocking for him. I think our receivers did a great job digging out the safeties and blocking the secondary. And A.J. is a guy that we know that we need to get involved more. It's a long season. Aaron Jones provided us with so much, not only in the run game, but in the pass game. And we know that we need both of those guys to stay healthy to make it through the duration of a long NFL season. Matt, I got to tell you, one of the greatest stretches of play calling I have personally ever seen came with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And you run, <laughs> I've never seen this, this is like a new intercollegiate record. You run the same play four times with A.J. Dillon, five yards, four yards, five yards, six yards. And at that point, in my mind, the Steelers are toast. They are beaten. They can't stop you because they can't stop A.J. Dillon right up the gut. How did you come about to call the same play four times in a row? Well, we were trying to set up that play pass and uh, probably should have ran it four more times in a row and maybe we would have scored. But uh, no, that's a great credit to our guys up front and our quarterback for getting us in the right looks and then A.J. just running hard. How about third down? You guys had an exceptional night, 9 of 15, 60%. Was the running game part of that, or how did you come out with that kind of performance? Yeah, I think so. I think there was a couple runs that we had. We were in some third and manageable situations, which is always good. But typically, when you have 15 third downs in a game, it, it, it can be a tough day. But uh, we won the money down, as, as we like to call it. 17 points allowed. That bottom line defensively is a good one. What did you see from that side of the ball? Yeah, I thought our defense, again, was fast and physical. They were flying around. Great effort, great energy. Was it perfect? No. But I thought uh, that was a winning performance, and we need that each and every week from them. I'm sure you have felt up until the Steeler game that, hey, we need to see more from Kingsley Kiki, or you certainly saw it against Pittsburgh. Yeah, he played physical and he got a really good push in the pocket and was able to, to like I said, push the guard back and, and cause the, the sack fumble, which was a key play in the game. Rashawn Geary, an impact performer against both the run and the pass. Yeah, RG goes a, a thousand miles an hour and he gives great effort all the time. And it starts with just who he is as a man and, and you can see his practice habits, they, they translate to the game. I want to talk about one of your new additions with Andre Campbell, and folks talk about three down running backs. He's a three down inside linebacker. He makes plays at every level. He certainly does, and whether we have him blitzing, whether we're, he's in coverage or defending the run, he, he has been proven to be a, an impact player for us, and he's a great leader in our locker room as well. How about the head coach encouraging the fans to get loud at Lambeau. How'd you like the results? And I don't know if you noticed this, but pretty soon the players on the bench are doing the same thing. How'd you like the results? Oh, I thought it was, it was impactful. They certainly responded the right way. And, you know, I was a little nervous going into the game. I saw a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers jerseys around town. And uh, I know that th there was a lot of terrible towels in Lambeau, but I thought our fans showed up in a big way for us and provided us with great support, and it, it makes a difference in the game. Thank you, Matt. Coming up, Randall Cobb himself. Don't go away.
It was definitely special uh, just to be back in that stadium and have an opportunity to go out there with my teammates and, and make some plays. It was a lot of fun. Felt like nothing had changed, like I've been here forever. Total Packers with Matt LaFleur is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. By Bellum Health and by Johnsonville. Welcome back. This one-on-one -on -one is brought to you by Pothole Frozen Pizza from Quick Trip. Randall, you've had countless big days, huge days as a Green Bay Packer, but was the Steeler game something a little extra special? It was definitely special uh, just to be back in that stadium and have an opportunity to go out there with my teammates and, and make some plays. It was a lot of fun. And you know, in the moment, it felt like nothing had changed, like I've been here forever, and it was just another day at the office. But you know, looking back on it after the game, uh, just to think of the journey over the past few years, you know, I, I don't take anything for granted, and uh, definitely a special moment for me. Randall, if you could give us the backstory on the 23-yard touchdown catch. Well, I come to the line of scrimmage after Aaron calls the play, and I, I look at the defense and see that the, the corner that was playing me, the nickelback, he was playing outside leverage. I got a safety that's coming down inside, and in my mind, I'm like, there's no way they're doubling me right now when Tate's on the field. And, I come off the ball and I realize that I am getting doubled. So, you know, I'm able to attack the first defender and beat him inside. And then I'm, I'm running right at the safety and I'm able to cross his face. And Aaron, I, I don't know if he read somewhere else, but then he came back to me and I just stayed running across the field on my route. And he was able to find me when I caught it and turned up field. I saw two defenders and the only thing in my mind is I don't know how many opportunities I'm going to get uh, this close to the end zone. He's got Randall Powell, touchdown! Randall, when you caught the ball and got north and south, I don't think Mad Mountain Dean could have stopped you. You looked like a picture of determination to get in that end zone. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's what I was going for. That's what I was going for. In those situations, when we get down in the goal zone, we're trying to cash in, so I just try to lay it out there for my teammates. Randall, on your other touchdown, a lot of congestion, a lot of traffic, and then you kind of reverse or pivot out of the coverage and sprint toward the sideline and get yourself open. Did that play come off as planned or was there some impromptu actions on your part there? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it didn't go as planned. We ended up on that play having three guys over two, over me and Tay. Uh, I think they were trying to take away the slant route that Tay was running right off of my back, uh, right there in the end zone. And they had a third guy that was sitting there underneath that. So Aaron started to move out the pocket, coming my direction. And only thing I could think of was break away from my man and try to get to that front pylon. And, and I tried to race to the front pylon and Aaron put it in a place where only I could get it. And I were able to get my, my feet down and, and make the catch. Got his man in the end zone, touchdown. Randall, could you define the chemistry that exists between you two guys on the football field. I think we all have those friends where we can complete each other's sentences. Um, that's kind of what it is on the football field for us. Like I kind of feel like I know what he's thinking a lot of the times and he knows what I'm thinking and we're able to make it work after being away for a couple years. It's like we picked up right where we left off. Year 11 for you, Randall. What's important now as opposed to earlier in your career? Uh, well, lots of change, you know. Uh, I think um, being here for the first eight years, uh, you all got to see my growth from a, a child coming in at 20 to a man at 28 with, with a newborn. And now my oldest is three, Caspian has turned three, and my youngest, Cade, is one. And just the perspective of life uh, as a parent and being able to have a little bit more grown man strength now after dealing with those kids, chasing them around uh, and seeing that show up on the field. But so I'm just humbled. I'm humbled by 
the opportunity and grateful for, for every day I get to walk in this building. Randall, thanks a lot for being with us and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you, Larry, appreciate it. Coming up, this week's Chalk Talk, don't go away. Welcome back. This week's Chalk Talk is brought to you by Network Health. During the radio broadcast of the Steeler game, I selected Billy Turner as the offensive lineman of the game. But that was before I watched the tape. After watching the tape, I still select Billy Turner as the offensive lineman of the game. Here's Billy, and here's that T.J. Watt guy everybody was talking about. And trying to block him is like trying to block a revolving door. There is always another move coming. Let's break it down. The fake, the right hand, left hand, right hand, but Billy counters every one of those moves. And while this pass is going to fall incomplete, there's nothing incomplete about that block. Off the field, Billy is a thoughtful, sensitive human being. But on the field, he will go for the throat. Watch him right here. And that war is effectively over. Royce Newman coming over with a courtesy shot, but totally unnecessary. Another win for Billy, and it's first and 10, Green Bay. Occasionally, the Steelers put Watt on the other side to see if he'd have any more success. And that left Billy and a guy by the name of Alex Highsmith. Good rusher in his own right, but Billy can really move his feet and he's very active with his hands and look how he handles that wicked spin move. Great hands, great feet, you cannot do it any better. And wasn't it great to see Randall Cobb having a big day at Lambeau Field? But I digress. Running game now, third and one, and watch Billy one-on-one -on -one against big Isaiah Bugs. He puts him flat on his back. And A.J. Dillon runs right behind that block for five big yards. Billy Turner, our offensive lineman of the game. He graded out the highest up front. So I thought he, did, he had a great day. And the energy that he brings, he's such a pro, I think, He's just such a great example for everybody on our football team to watch about how he goes about his business. He does a great job. Total Packers with Matt LaFleur is brought to you by Network Health. By your Wisconsin Toyota dealers. And by Ticketmaster. My dad played football. He was like, I'm gonna try you at playing football. The way we competed against each other, that what kept me driving. Good when you're able to have someone that know the game of football. So in all those off seasons that I came from my rookie year until my pops passed away, I was able to go home and sit down and break down a game for him. And he was just telling me things I need to work on. It was on the holiday and he called me outside it was like, I just got to tell you something. And I was like, nah, this can't be, be happening. And uh, that's when he first told me he had cancer. It was tough. I think uh, over the years, what he had to endure when, um, growing up in his childhood and just the years just caught up with him and uh, he just got tired. Hours or so before he passed away, had a conversation that I'll never forget. And he was just saying, just be strong, uh, you got this. Um, I'm always be with you, and that was my my last uh, encounter with my father. That game, it was crazy when Howard Green got through that line. I saw that ball floating in the air. I was like, "Here's my opportunity. Don't mess it up." My dad always told me, "You have to live in the moment." When I got in the end zone, I went to my knees, and that's all I can can do is just give him the, the praise and glory because he the one kept me into the, to the game. The Packers and Bell and Health are featuring exclusive hats for Packers versus Cancer. Join the fight today and help the Vince Lombardi Cancer Foundation make an impact in the fight against cancer. Visit PackersProShop.com today. 
Welcome back. Time to hand out game balls, Matt. And on offense, surprisingly enough, you go with Randall Cobb, and we already talked about five touches, 69 yards, two touchdowns, but also Mr. Automatic on third down. Yeah, that was that was critical. Those money downs, as we like to call them, for him to come up big and get the separation and our line doing a great job up front and Aaron throwing with how he always throws, very accurate and on time and uh, those were critical plays in the game. On defense, we already talked about him as well, Rashawn Gary, and I looked it up on Pro Football Focus just for fun because they have lots of stats. Three pressures, a sack, a hit, a hurry, three tackles, three assists, and numbers aside, at times, Rashawn looked unblockable. How about the time when he was climbing over the blocker for the sack? He is relentless, and that's the energy and attitude and performance that we need from him and I think it's contagious and I think the the other 10 guys on the field feed off of him. Another defensive game ball goes to Kenny Clark, four tackles, one for a loss, hit on the QB and a big, big fumble recovery and does that guy go about his business in the right way or what? Yeah, absolutely. Every week you can always count on Kenny and I think his play from week one to week four is continually getting better each and every week and uh, you know, he, he's not only a leader on the field, he's a leader off the field for us. Special teams, one player, and what an addition, Corey Bajorquez. Has he been a great addition or what? Absolutely. Had uh, some great punts in that game. Obviously, the one down inside the five-yard line. Then we had uh, the one when we're backed up. And he was at 57 yards. Yeah. He just totally flipped the field. So, and that was a great job on that play in particular by Malik Taylor getting down there to force the fair catch, but Bojo has been consistent and he's been really good. And another fella on special teams, Isaac Yadam, two big tackles, that's a big night on the teams. Yeah, absolutely, and Ike went down there and he was the guy that kind of saved the ball from going into the end zone on Bojo's punt inside the, the five, but um, Ike's been a great addition to us and he's provided a spark on special teams. and. We hope to continue that throughout the course of the season. Thank you, Matt. Coming up, the last word from the coach. The last word with Matt LaFleur is brought to you by Construction Business Group and Wisconsin Operating Engineers. Welcome back. Time for the last word from the coach. And this week you traveled to Cincinnati, the Bengals, 3-1 and one with wins over Minnesota, Pittsburgh, and Jacksonville, and a loss to the Chicago Bears of all people. What do you see from the Bengals? I see a team that has a lot of young players, but a lot of good players, and uh, they are extremely dangerous. They really, when you look at the Chicago game, could easily be 4-0 right now. So we're going to have our work cut out for us. We're going to have to earn everything we get. I know Zach Taylor pretty well, I've got a lot of respect for him and just the type of culture he's been able to implement there and they, they've got a team that is hungry and believing right now. What do you think of Joe Burrow coming out? Joe Burrow, is, there's a reason he was the number one pick. I mean, this guy is as cool as it gets. He is a unbelievable athlete, great quarterback and our defense is going to have their hands full in terms of his ability to not only make plays in the pocket but use his legs, extend plays, and create that off-schedule play. Thank you, Matt. Good luck against the Bengals, and thank you for watching. Until next time, take care.